Hey kids! A Space Jam movie's coming out this weekend! What year is it? The year is 2021, Robin Williams from Jumanji. And yeah, that's really weird. Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Cam, and I rewatched Space Jam 1996. I feel like I really don't have to recite the plot to you all, because if I even just say Space Jam, you all immediately are like, Oh, I know what that is. It's the movie with Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny in it. I mean, it's not really that hard to miss. In seriousness though, with the announcement of Space Jam 2 and its subsequent coming to theaters and HBO Max this weekend, I thought now was as good a time as any to go back and rewatch the original because I actually watched this quite a bit to the point where I can like recite entire scenes to myself. That's how much I watched this. But in my research, in terms of looking up other reviews, I found that this movie may not be as beloved as I remember it being. There's some reviews on Letterboxd that just tear this movie apart. There's some ironic ones. It's like a four and a half star rating and it says cinema peaked here and other dry nonsense. There was even one that called this the greatest documentary ever made. There was a part of me that said to myself, you only enjoyed that because the Looney Tunes were in it and nostalgia is clouding your judgment. And I was afraid that this was just essentially a 90 minute Nike commercial. Well, upon rewatching this, yeah, it's a 90 minute Nike commercial. But I weirdly enjoyed this in a way where it's such a product of its time. Like, seriously, this is such a 90s movie, all it needs is like an NWO reference and like a Bill Clinton scandal reference and the 90s mix would be complete. In my research, I found that this movie was actually supposed to come out earlier when Michael Jordan was still playing basketball. However, when he retired to go play baseball, wonder how that worked out for him, the product was shelved. However, when he's like, oh, I'm back in basketball again, Space Jam got back with him. And the funniest part is that when the when producer Ivan Reitman approached certain actors to be in this movie, they just laughed it off and just were like, no, are you crazy? There's That's literally a quote from one of the producers. It's literally, actors would go to him and say, are you crazy? But enough about that, I, I want to talk about what the movie itself. And like I said, I did enjoy it in a weird time capsule sense, an appreciation of just the 90s in a 90 minute package. The best compliment that I can give to this movie is the animation. I am a massive Looney Tunes fan. Like, you give me anything Looney Tunes, no matter how good or bad it is, and I am there for it. They would show endless Looney Tunes marathons on Boomerang from Cartoon Network, and I'd watch them all, even if they were the same ones. And I had seen, like, Rabbit of Seville and Duck Rabbit Duck too many times to mention. I'd still watch it again, because the Looney Tunes are just timeless. For the time, the chemistry, I want to say, between the live-action elements and the cartoon elements actually worked pretty well together. Give props to the effects team for making this look even halfway decent. Even the animated cast is really solid. Billy West does a really good job as Bugs Bunny. My boy D. Bradley Baker of Star Wars The Clone Wars fame is great as Daffy Duck. Danny DeVito is really good as Mr. Schwackhammer. I mean, the animated side of things is really just holds this movie down. The rest of the movie... Ah... Uh... Not so much. I don't like using the term vanity project because it's a buzzword and I just really don't like it. But this is a Michael Jordan van vanity project. Michael Jordan plays Michael Jordan, which nothing but respect to the greatest basketball player of all time. Like won six or seven rings, was the spearhead of the most dominant teams in NBA history, taking nothing away from him on the court. He's not a great actor. He essentially plays himself, and that can only go so far. And it's even more of a vanity project when you see that MJ pretty much invited all of his friends to come along. 
Charles Barkley, Larry Bird, Muggsy Bogues, and that's naming just a couple off the top of my head. Nice to see him there, especially Larry Bird, but it just, they play themselves. Wayne Knight from Jurassic Park, God bless him, he's trying and gets some physical comedy in, and it was always nice to see him. And in my research, I found that this role was originally supposed to be played by Michael J. Fox. And just in general, the movie feels like it's two different movies that the producers just crammed together, either because Michael Jordan jumped back into basketball, or the Looney Tunes were surprisingly popular around that time. I'll back either argument. From an art standpoint, this is just a curiosity in movie history. Because, like I said, this is such a product of the late of the mid to late 90s. Like I said, all it needs is just NWO references and Bill Clinton references, and this is the most 90s movie that's ever existed. I can definitely understand why somebody wouldn't like this movie. After all, this is not cinema. This is not meant to be taken seriously. However, if you love this movie, I do also get it, and I know a lot of my friends who adore this movie to pieces. For me personally, I find this movie to be enjoyable, but incredibly weird all at the same time. Kind of like Bill Murray in, like, in his entire character. Very enjoyable, but also very weird all at once. What do I expect from Space Jam 2? I really don't know. From what trailers I've seen, it just kind of looks like HBO Max the movie, and seeing the Iron Giant and the notorious P.I.G. Ugh, and Granny doing the Matrix thing. It just, it just feels like a, it's gonna be a bunch of references. But nonetheless, I shall keep an open mind and hope for the best. But that is all for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna be dropping another Twilight Zone vlog all about the episode called The Chaser, and then I will have my review for Escape Room 2, 2 Tournament of Champions. Plus reviews for Space Jam 2 and Roadrunner, a film ab about Anthony Bourdain. I finally found the theater close enough to where I can actually go see it. Yay. And also, on Sunday, I'll be dropping my video for Chronicle, a severely underrated movie that I just feel like talking about. But if you like this vi video, please be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, and if you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to allow notifications. That way, when a new video drops, you'll be the first to know about it. My name is Ryan Cam. I'll see you in the next one.